When people buy plants, they'll often ask, what is a good plant for a problem area, such as a very hot, dry, sun, dry site in full sun? This is a great question to ask, and it's a really wise way to select plants, because finding plants for the growing conditions of the site is the start to having success, along with improving soils with organic matter like compost. In this video, I'm going to share with you some plants for very extreme hot, dry, challenging sites known as hell strips. By hell strips, I mean narrow growing areas that are very close to pavement, or they might be on the south or west side, close to the foundation of a home in full sun. So here's some good plants for those hell strips or very hot, dry sites. But know that even though all of these will tolerate those conditions, if you can amend that soil first with organic matter such as compost, that's a great idea. Even though the plants will tolerate it without it, why should they have to when it's not that hard to incorporate organic matter? Of course, sedums are the go-to plant for hail strips. They're almost always successful in these conditions, even with little irrigation once they're established. There are many sedums you can select from. They range in height from a few inches to up to two feet. Low-growing sedums come in a very wide range of leaf colors and leaf shapes, and some of them bloom quite well. If you mix them up, they'll create a quilt-like appearance in your hail strip. With so many available, though, be sure to select sedums for winter hardiness. One of my favorites is Angelina, which is the one in this photo with yellow foliage, and it's even evergreen, or I should say ever yellow, most of the winter. Showy stone crop sedum are the taller plants like Autumn Joy or Neon. Their rosy to pink flower clusters are very showy from August until frost, and they attract a wide array of pollinators. Butterfly milkweed is a native plant with bright orange flowers, very attractive to monarch butterflies. It blooms from June into August, and with a very deep taproot, it is tolerant of very poor dry soils as well as drought. New growth of butterfly milkweed, it appears fairly late in the spring. So you wanna be patient while you're waiting for that to appear and not assume that the plant is winter killed. Globe thistle is not a true thistle, but it's about as tough being another tap-rooted plant. Globe thistle will grow upright, as you can see here, with very stiff stems and spiny leaves, hence the name globe thistle. It tolerates a wide range of soils, including very poor dry soils. Globe thistle blooms July to August and has these round, interesting bluish blossoms. Purple poppy mallow is a very low growing ground cover with wine colored cup shaped flowers in June mostly, but it often blooms much later into the season. Purple poppy mallow has a long tap root, which gives the plant very good drought tolerance, but it also makes these plants tough to transplant. Purple poppy mallow is another one of our native plants and it's very tolerant of hail strip conditions. Wichita Falls goldenrod is appreciated by many gardeners for the late summer blooming. It too tolerates poor dry soils and it'll also tolerate clay soils if you're dealing with that issue. Wichita Falls blooms from September until frost with these dense plumes of tiny yellow flowers and do know that goldenrod does not cause hay fever, as many people believe, and it's a great pollinator plant. Napita, or cat mint, checks all of the boxes for hot, dry hail strips. It tolerates dry soil, shallow, rocky soils, and it is very drought tolerant. Blooming April to September, if some deadheading is done during the summer, it also has fragrant foliage. Walker's Low is the preferred variety because it has sterile seeds and it will not self-seed. All of the plants that I just mentioned are very tolerant of very hot, dry conditions such as a hail strip. And remember, selecting the right plant for the growing conditions is the key to garden success.